Happy Monday everyone! Welcome to Kwentuang Pilipina, a safe space for you to listen and be heard. In this podcast, we are sharing cuentos or stories from different Filipino women. I am your sunshine, Cleo, the founder of Hirayo Pilipina and your host here at Kwentuang Pilipina. For today's episode, we have Ai Garcia, the CEO of Nala Woman a company that sources and promotes safe and sustainable products such as organic and sustainable sanitary pads and tampons, and campaigns against period poverty. Today, we discussed on the journey of Nala Woman as a brand and the problems it aims to solve. Join us as we unpack the brand pillars of the business and what a difference it makes to have a social impact in the community. Once again, I, I thank you so much for agreeing to be here at Kwentuang Pilipina, a safe space to share stories from different Filipino women. <laughs> oh, thanks for inviting me, Cleo. Thank you so much. So, we usually start our episode with an icebreaker. So, do you know to how to play the game Never Have I Ever? Oh gosh, these, these things make me so nervous. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah, we will do that. So, I hope you won't get nervous because the questions are easy lang naman. And it's related to our topic then. So, first, never have I ever had an embarrassing period experience. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right. No Not if that was... Yeah, that yeah. was, um, mm-hmm. but I guess there, if I do have to share, it's just too much. In, oh, gosh. Um, yeah, because it, it, let me just say that it involved um, a, me and a boy and anything that um, when that happens, it's always very embarrassing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's okay. No worries about that. As for me, naman, well, I actually never saw yung mga tagos. As something embarrassing, I don't know why, but, uh, or kaya yung tipo sa high school kapag magpapasa ka ng napkin, di ba, it's super embarrassing for other people. Pero para sa akin, never talaga siya na bakit nakakahiya, parang ganon. So, I think, yeah, yeah and, and I think that's what we're trying to do right now, mm-hmm. right? Is uh, break the stigma and make it make people understand that it's very normal it's just yes. it's as normal as like when you sneeze or when mm. you have yeah i agree with or you when you have those embarrassing moments when you have food in your mouth all embarrassing moments but it shouldn't be embarrassing but i think it's because we don't talk about it enough mm-hmm. that's why it's it's very embarrassing for us <laughs> yeah so that's why we're here <laughs> At kwento ang Pilipino to talk about this stuff. So, yeah. For the second one, never have I ever looked back after making my brand a sustainable company. Oh, um, never. Never looked back. It was always the driving force why we started the company to begin with. Wow, yeah. And kahit, di ba, I asked this and never have I ever. We asked this and never have I ever because... Sometimes sustainability is also a privilege that we have to take because it's much more expensive and not everyone has the privilege to be able to switch to sustainability, right? Not yet. Um, Mm -hmm. And the reasons why these these products tend to be more expensive is because of the... um, the supply chain behind it like there's mm. little there's less resources or the resources to grow something like organic cotton is more expensive because they don't use um fertilizers to help their mm. crops grow you know um that's that's we're hoping that the more people want to use our products then the then the more like organic cotton growers will be or if if, if we switch to another material like bamboo fibers or um, banana fibers, then, you know, there will be more suppliers of that sort because the demand is there. Oh, wow. Okay. That's great knowledge. And that's a nice way to encourage our customers to switch to sustainable products as well. (laughs) As early as now, yeah, we do need to support especially um, small businesses that are trying to push this into the mainstream. Um, Just because at least you know that the, uh, that, 
one, it's not going to a large co- corporation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> two, the, <laughs> two, there's a lot more care behind um, sustainable companies, um, and so small sustainable companies, because they're much more open in terms of like their product ingredients, um, where they're sourcing their products from, and they're much closer to um, community. the customer and the, the community, yeah, and also the suppliers. Okay, right, right. For the third one, um, never have I ever imagined that Mala Woman would create such a huge social impact like it has today. Are, do we have a huge social impact? <laughs> I don't think we're there yet. <laughs> okay, but you're getting there. I mean... Um, I hope so. I really mm-hmm. hope so that we get to bring these conversations to light and then um, raise the awareness. But not only that, just, you know, like... We, we, we just want to be like your ate that you go to for everything menstrual health related. And that's always just been our peg. Like if you were to imagine a friend, like if when we were conceptualizing the company, it's like um, all of our friends were just like, oh, she's this one girl who you would go to for sex advice, for um, clothing advice, the things that you'd be too embarrassed to ask your mom about or your, but she's the cool aunt, you know, or the girl that was in your class that was always slightly older, or, you know, the type that wore pearls and was had all the, the, the Tita vibes already. Yeah. And we all have this one friend. For, for me and my, and my advisor, Amanda Dominguez, it was our friend, Maria Cruz. <laughs> We oh. said, not if Nala were a person, it would be this girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. That's a great thing to do, Rin, no? Because you you are able to see what how how do you want your brand to look like, right? And what what does it to- and feel? It was more for the feeling. Yeah, it was more for the feeling, really. <laughs> okay, yeah, to humanize yeah. your brand. Um, now I want to talk about since we're yeah. done with the little icebreaker that we have i just want to ask you how did you come up with a brand such as nala woman um interesting story it wasn't me it was actually my brother um one day my brother came into my apartment and um showed up with pads and tampons and said i i do we do girls really need to use both like can't we just use one pad for or one type of tampon? Why do we have to have so many? And I was like, what are you doing? And what are you, what, what, where is this coming from? Mm-hmm. And um, he basically realized that one, not only are, are there more women than men in the Philippines, but two, he just felt like um, companies that were catering to women weren't doing their share in um, education and awareness. And I was always bothered by the fact that period products in the Philippines just contain so much plastic. And so the more that we talked about, you know, like, hey, what can we do about this? There's definitely um, a huge gap in the market for sustainable products, especially for products that are used every month and that are contributing to tons and tons of plastic waste in, the, in our country. Um, we decided to start Nala. Um, Focus on period products, sustainable period care products, and focus on products that, like, I wanted to use and that I wanted to become available in the Philippines. Like, um, I've always practiced alternative menstrual care for the past 10, 15 years. Um, It all started with, like, me getting off birth control and then trying to find, you know, like, uh, trying to just understand my body more when I got off that. And then it, switch to you know using the menstrual cup and then it i've always been a tampon user and all this time i was always so frustrated that i would have to um, import my tampons because the tampons that were available in the philippines were so expensive um and i've just kept waiting for somebody to you know bring it in like why don't we have anything local and you know like my brother and i were sitting on this idea and this company for a good two years before we actually launched (laughs) oh i see and no one still hadn't done it and the interesting thing that my brother um, conceptualized was our subscription service. So he was always fascinated how, like in um, like uh, in the west, in the west, they have like uh, subscriptions for essential products, like mm-hmm. anywhere from like ra- men's razors to socks to um, food. Um, and he wanted to try it out here in the Philippines with a product that he knew was going to come monthly. Yeah. <laughs> and so we kind of built. 
the, the business with the ethos and um, created Nala Woman. Wow. I mean, the first time that I encountered your brand, super amazing talaga that I really had to try it out and I had to reach out to you for collaboration then and on. And actually, when I tried using your pads, ang ganda niya. Like, I, I can feel the difference. You know? Yeah, because it's like using a Kleenex for your pooch. <laughs> it's because of it's made out of 100% organic cotton and the problem is we've never been exposed to that here. Like yeah. um, the, 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 the pads that we have in the market contain so much plastic and mm-hmm. so much um, artificial fibers. And, you know, this is how, uh, this is how we get to keep it, it low cost and affordable mm-hmm. though. When we start introducing all of these like different types of synthetic materials into the pads, um, and it, it serves its purpose, but then we also forgo one thing that we really do don't think about, which is comfort. Yeah. And it's like, what would you rather use to blow your nose? A Kleenex or a uh, bond paper? <laughs> a Kleenex, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I and mean, these, things, these parts of us are so sensitive, you know? Yes. And actually, um, I've never tried any pad before that... That is so comfortable, just like Nala Woman. So, ayoko na din mag-switch back. <laughs> Kaya mag-subscribe na rin po ako sa subscription service yeah. ng Nala Woman. It's amazing. Yeah, the, wow. it's, it's, um, it, when we were also conceptualizing the company, we mm-hmm. wanted to have one pad to rule them all, basically, because across the room, all the girls that we were working on this with were like, do we have to keep switching? Or like, I have to use this, I have to use a certain brand because I just don't want to change that often because it's inconvenient. Yeah. yeah. And even though ours is ultra thin, but we are coming out with thicker ones, um, we've had customer feedback and also from personal experience now, like, one, you don't feel like it's there, or two, you don't have to switch it that often because it's... Um, because because it it really does absorb a lot of liquid mm-hmm. more so than the regular pad no matter how thick it is yeah because okay. it's cotton <laughs> yeah i see i see thank you thank you for describing that um you met wait we haven't mentioned about period poverty yet but you have mentioned that when when we asked you to tell more about your brand so we just want to know what is period poverty and for our listeners to know as well um, period poverty is basically when you don't have access to um, resources to manage your monthly cycle, your period when it comes. Um, either it either comes in like you don't have pads or you don't have period panties, or you don't have menstrual cups, but it also goes as far as not having the right like bathroom to wash your to practice or how you not be able to clean yourself, you know, or like not even being, not, not be, sorry, <laughs> when you're not in a safe space where you can like manage it in a private, in a, in, in your own private areas. Yeah. Sorry, that is your private area. In the privacy of your own home. Um, those are, there are different things that contribute to period poverty. Um, but the biggest one is really like not having access to pads or tampons or period panties or menstrual cups. Um, menstrual cups, especially, even if they're the most sustainable option, um, already have a mushroom to walk to. You don't have a bathroom to go. You don't have to, you know, you don't have a place to just, you know, take care of yourself. Um, and it's actually a really big problem, um, especially in the Philippines, especially, most especially in the rural areas where it takes, it, it, there, I don't know, like, it's, it'll be hard to find or it's rare. There was one, um, so we've been doing a lot of donation drives um, from the good graces of people who, you know, do it during re- for relief efforts to yeah. just, you know, just ongoing, to, um, just ongoing, uh, like, campaigns that they have. And there was one um, where it was a, tr- a tribe in Davao. I can't remember the name of it now. It escapes me. But basically... Um, some teachers were going there to distribute uh, school supplies. And so I asked, I asked them, like, how, can you please ask if they need pads and how do they manage their periods? And they came back to me and said that um, sometimes they use um, 
pads, but they'll cut it in half to make it extend mm. its life span longer. Most of the time they use rags or basically nothing at all. Um, and so then we just sent them boxes of night pads because it's longer. So at least if they had to cut it, it was they, they would, there would be more to go around. Yeah. Oh, I mean, this is the kind of topic that we should really shed awareness on. Because it's normal. I mean, kahit sa mga, kumari po kapag um, may mga bagyo, ganun, I think pads and the menstrual products are also es- essential to the point yeah, that... very essential. Yeah, to the point that dapat kasama siya sa, sa pagkain, kumbaga. Because girls have it monthly. And um, to, just to have access to that shouldn't be a privilege. Because it's becoming a privilege, but it shouldn't be because it's it's a right of every woman to have access to these menstrual products. To safe, clean, and yes. basically just that, safe and clean mm-hmm. menstrual care products. Um, yeah. uh, I've been getting reports that in the community pantries, uh, period care products are always the first to go. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, nakita talaga natin na super essential siya. <laughs> um, right, uh, right now, I just want to ask you as well, what inspired your brand to become a mental menstrual health resource? Um, for me, I just felt like there wasn't enough in- information. Like, mm-hmm. I would always go to Dr. Google for every pain, every symptom that I felt like was um, that during that time of the month. And um, I also didn't know who to go to. You know, like, I wasn't, I, 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 it's not like I would ask, it's not that I wouldn't ask my friends or family, but they also didn't have a lot of information. Okay. Um, okay. And when you do ask, you know, your doctors or OBGYNs, um, if you do go, for the longest time, I didn't even know that those were things that you're supposed to do every six months. Like, when was the last time you went to your OBGYN? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And these, you know, like, these are things that um, we should have learned growing up if we mm. had sex education. Or even if um, our elders were more informed about m- menstrual care in general. And um, it's, again, like, I go back to, like, most of our population, I think 60% are women, but yet we didn't know so little about our bodies. Um and so that was maybe one of the driving forces for me was I just really wanted a safe space for women to learn about their menstrual health. Oh, that's really nice. I mean, thank you for creating Nala Woman. I just, I just have to say it. Uh, thank you for creating Nala Woman with your brother and for establishing it. Because honestly, you're right. Kahit ako, sa totoo lang po, um, when I first had my period, never akong tinaruan ng, ng mom ko or ng mga babae sa bahay ko kung anong gagawin. And, yeah, to na, tapos nung tinanong ko yung mom ko, I asked my mom, ma, dapat tinaru- tinuturuan mo ko ng ganito? <laughs> tinuturuan. Kasi nakita ko na sa social media, tinuruan ko na yung sarili ko. Tapos, ang sabi niya lang sa akin, ganun, hindi rin sa akin tinuro yan ng, ng lola mo eh. So, it's very uncommon, I think. I think it's very common that we don't get um, that we don't get taught. For me, let's talk about our first period stories. Um, yeah. Okay. For me, I was so embarrassed. I was in sixth grade. I was one of the even though I was one of the last people in my class to get it. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really also very eager to get it because all my girlfriends were already having their periods mm-hmm. except for me. When I got it, first I didn't know what it was because it was brown, and I always in my mind I thought periods were red. Yeah. And then. Um, and then it went on for a few days and then I realized just like, oh, maybe this is my period. But I was still too embarrassed to ask. And I think I remember asking my friends, like, is it supposed to be brown or red? And they're like, red, of course. And so I just didn't say anything. And um, I, I, I stole panty liners from my mom and I hid it in the back of my closet because I was so embarrassed. Mm. Um, and I didn't tell my mom for months um, because I just you know, just felt like, okay, I guess it's here. And I guess I'm just going to learn how to manage it. Um, but I do remember like maybe two years before that, 
um, the only sex ed I've ever had in my life was um, how to manage your period. Like they got all the girls in our school in one room and it was just basically, I can't remember what we talked about. All I remember was them teaching us how to um, dispose of your napkin. <laughs> So it's not just op it's not left open in the banyo, and that 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 like imprinted itself in my core memory. Okay, yeah, I mean, the ba? Nakita natin na from our Filipino roots, I guess that it's really normal for Filipinos not to talk about it because we're too embarrassed to talk about it, even if it shouldn't be something that. It's an embarrassment, kumbaga, because it's very normal. I think it's because it's blood, um, mm. and the way that we talk about, like, I've had guy friends um, believe and say to me, like, don't trust anything that bleeds for seven days and lives. You know, <laughs> it's just like it's already embedded in our. Yes, it's funny, but it's also embedded into like our psyche and our culture and the way we view it. Um, and it's a generational thing, you know. It's been happening for years, yeah. and I, 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 I hope that we can just not change the conversation, but make it more acceptable, inclusive. Um, make it more inclusive. Just you know, recognize uh, that it's there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree yeah. with you. <laughs> <laughs> now, I also want to talk about um, some of the problems that Nala Woman aims to solve. So we talked about um, having sustainable and safe organic products as the ingredients for your pads. So I want to ask, how did you source the materials used to make sure your products are safe for the body? Um, it took a year, like a year of, of, re of research. Um, trying to find like what are the harmful effects and toxins that already exist in our uh, in our pads um that cause irritation um you know like what are the impacts of chlorine bleaching and why is it so important that you know that the the cotton that we have isn't wasn't bleached with chlorine in order to make it white right mm -hmm. and then we um and then we looked at um suppliers that had certifications that we could verify. And I was finding a supplier that sourced GOTS, um, certified organic cotton, which is basically, um, uh, uh, it's basically a certification body in, based in Europe that is able to track like, how good is a supply chain from like where the, how, how it was grown to how it was produced. Um, um, it really just took a lot of research, and, and we had to look all over the world for it. Um, wow. And and it and it actually inspired. So I have a friend. Her name is Celia, and she's into um, textile production. And she currently has a business that turns, you know, like um, local local roots that we have from like banana fiber coconut to into cloth. Mm -hmm. And ever since ever since we've started our conversations on like produce on like menstrual like sorry producing locally sourced menstrual um care products here uh we we got to explore all the different possibilities to have that here in the philippines yeah so i guess that's one of the things you want to solve is that like okay we may not be big or organic cotton producers but we have a lot of coconut and we have a lot of banana fibers that are usually just gone you know thrown away and so how do we repurpose that and turn it into um an essential resource and you know i'm so i'm so lucky that i'm not the only one that's thinking about this you know like india with like their billions of people and way more women that have um the way more women who have periods to deal with are already way ahead of of that in terms of research from like the manufacturing facilities to producing the fibers itself so we just have to learn and adopt it here in the philippines Oh, okay. So you really had to source from different parts of the world for it. Yeah. But, but for now, like, nung nabanggit niyo po yung, um, I think, banana crops, I think, uh, ginagamit po yun ngayon sa paggawa ng sanitary pads? Yeah, it is in India. Um, I, have, I haven't tried them yet. Um, but, yeah, they make it. And also coconut. <laughs> 
Wow, okay. I hope that we will be able to adapt that soon too, no? Yeah. <laughs> Rooting for Nala. <laughs> Let's see, huh? Let's see. Yeah, rooting for you guys. Um, now, since you actually had a, we, we had a glimpse earlier already of the subscription service for period care essentials. Um, uh, I hope you can discuss with, uh, with us what can the consumers of Nala Woman do now that they couldn't do before with other brands? Um, one is, I think the subscription is a big thing. Um, so when you buy a Nala Woman product on our website, especially, it's only applicable to the bundle. So we have the starter kit, which has a day pad or a night pad and a panty liner or we just, or the day pad, night pad. We also have bulk orders. Um, we want to give women one less thing to worry about. Like in with their day-to-day -day lives, they already have so much to think about. Like how many times have you been caught without a pad? Oh, a lot of months. times, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. More times. It just happened to me last week. I was in the mall. Um, and it's because, like, even though we know that it's coming every month, it still catches us by surprise when it arrives, and we, we're never prepared. Mm. Um, and so we want to change that through the subscriptions. So with the subscriptions, we want the deliveries to be in sync with your cycle. So you just have to tell us, you just, you know, the first day that you order it, then we'll, it's already recorded in our system that uh, d your delivery is coming up, but we won't send it yet until you approve the delivery. So you're just not going to get billed automatically or, or it just arrive in your doorstep. Although that's what we would like, right? Um, and the best of all, we just, we give, we give our customers a 5% discount when they do the subscriptions, just, you know, reduce that, just reduce the, um, as like our convenience fee discount or something. Oh, wow. Um, hopefully like there's a lot, a lot of things that we would like to improve on the subscription, but that's for another conversation and that's for the payments providers to, mm -hmm. um, to solve and not for us, but yeah. We're hoping that um, more girls subscribe, and so they have, just give them one less thing to worry about every month. Wow. Okay. I will definitely subscribe. And for all the women who are listening right now, I hope you consider subscribing to this. Um, may I just ask if you offer cash on delivery for it? Since I think maraming Filipinos, um, cash on delivery and preferred mode of payment. Yeah, yeah, oh, we, wow. we, we offer COD, we have um, GCAF, GCash also, which is really, um, like, I think, like, 40% of our customers are paying through GCash. Yeah. And there's also credit card and bank transfer. Oh, that's nice, really nice. There are a lot of options. Um, I, I thank you so much for being here. And we're now down to our last question, which is actually all about Nala Woman's social impact. So you mentioned the Pledge a Pad campaign when we asked you to tell us about your brand. So uh, we just want to ask, how does the Pledge a Pad campaign help solve period poverty? Um, so the, while we also do, donate 10% of our pro profits, or sorry, our revenue too, um, to, to relief efforts and green whenever, wherever we can, we do need help with reaching more people. And so our pledge a pad campaign is basically our donation drive to, um, encourage people to buy a pad for a menstruator in need. So when you buy one for yourself, just remember to check out pledge a pad. So then we can add it to the pool of um, menstruators we have to give to because there's so many. Yeah. If, <laughs> if, if we could give to everyone, we will. Wow. And we'll try. Nice. Okay. I definitely learned a lot. And this conversation must be held often, more often, because it really brings awareness to all our listeners. And I hope that they will consider switching to Nala Woman as well. I'm an advocate. <laughs> what stayed with me in my Quintuan with the AI is that cheaper items still often come at a cost. 
Kapag gusto talaga natin na quality na isang bagay, kahit hindi lang sa sanitary pads actually, eh, we really have to see it as an investment na mapapakinabangan naman natin in the long run. Moreover, it's good for the environment and also good for us. Make sure to follow Nala Woman as well on Instagram. And if you are not yet part of our community, make sure to join our Facebook group, Kwentuhang Pilipina Community. And of course, don't forget to tag us on Facebook and Instagram while you are listening on the podcast right now. And also tell us what stayed with you in this episode at Kwentuhang Pilipina and at yours on Shine Cleo. I will see you next Monday for another episode. Bye! <laughs>